this is our next topic will be um, social media strategy. Know your nose. That's to nose, not no nose, but know your nose. Um, I am Bethany McDaniel. I am a the uh, web and social media manager for Georgia Gov. So uh, that means that I run our Facebook and our Twitter. I also post blogs on our website. And I'm in charge of updating the content on uh, Georgia.gov, so the state of Georgia's website. So I would assume that if not everyone <coughs> in this room, at least your agency has at some point received an email from me, either begging for guest blog posts or for um, updating the content on the state of Georgia's website. So that's me. We now have a face for that email address. <laughs> that's me. Um, a couple of, well, first of all, we're going to learn about what a social media, or what a content strategy is, why it's important, and then we'll go get into our knows, what you need to know, what you need to know to put in it. A couple of disclaimers before I continue. Um, you should take what you're learning today, and what you're learning here, and what you read, and what articles you see, and whatnot. Um, as more as guidelines rather than standards, rather than this is how you should be. Because everyone in here is different. Everyone's agency is different. You should take and pick what you see and what you hear and then implement that, implement that to your own agency. Make, mold your own um, content strategy. Second disclaimer, um, never again, oh, I don't want to say never, probably never again in my adult life will I ever get to give a presentation where it's socially acceptable to use memes so this, I have a lot of memes in here, so just bear with me. <laughs> memes are um, pictures, common pictures on the internet that have certain different words or phrases on it that are, I think they're hilarious. <laughs> it takes a certain sense of humor, but I kind of love them. So for example, this is a popular meme. It's what people think that you do, what you do, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously I think I'm Mark Zuckerberg, but in actuality, I'm not. I just sit at my computer with glasses and a plaid shirt on. <laughs> so this is an um, example of a meme. So let's get started. So what is content strategy? Uh, Rebecca Lieb wrote a great article in Marketing Land. It should be in your handouts, um, explaining what um, a social strategy is, content strategy is. And this, is, this sentence that she has in her introduction just really encompasses all of it. It's fantastic. So creating a repeatable process to govern content marketing and make it accountable to measure goals. Let's break that down. We'll take it into steps. So the first part is a repeatable process, creating a repeatable process. <coughs> this makes your content, your social strategy, systematic. You, you decide who creates. You decide what is created. You decide when it's published. You decide the workflow of how it's distributed. This is how you create content. You have a strategy for it. Um, you're doing controlled experiments. You're discovering what works and what doesn't work. So that's the first part. The second part is to govern your content marketing. So we need to make a clear distinction between content marketing and content strategy. A lot of people use these terms interchangeably, but they're different. They're kind of. I mean, they are different. You'll see. So content strategy is the bigger picture. It's the, the, the big picture. Um, it's a process of getting your audience to be interested in you and to engage with them, and then they'll share you, and then you'll get more followers, and you're awesome. That's, so that's content strategy. Content marketing is the tools used. So your content marketing is within your content strategy. So content marketing, the tools used to facilitate the process. It's how you use your voice to accomplish your goals, which is the next part. So remember, content strategy and content marketing. So the next part is to be accountable to measure your goals. So this is huge, and we'll talk about this in a second, but having goals and aspirations and boundaries is the foundation of your content strategy. What, and so having this um, strategy, it allows you to be accountable, to make sure that you're meeting your goals. What do you want to accomplish? How do you want to accomplish it? This is your proof. This is your proof to see that you have met or not met your goals. That's part of your content strategy. So that's a quick overview. There are a lot of resources and articles that feel free to delve more into. Um, so the next part, but do we really need one? Do we need a content strategy? Is it important? Well, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Having a content strategy is huge. Um, so it can organize your outreach. It 
gives you quantitative hard evidence to see what works and what doesn't work. Content is king. So having a good content, it not only allows you to grab people's attention, but allows you to keep them. It allows you to let them keep coming back to you. Um, and so your audience is reaching more, you're reaching more people with your message. But in order to have good content, you have to have a good content strategy. The content is king, but you have to have your content strategy. Um, however, there's always a however, um, in order to do this, you have to have patience. Patience is a virtue. You need to be patient, that way you can see trends over time, and you can't rush, but you can't rush a content strategy. You just can't do that, because then you won't see. So without patience, your content strategy becomes irrelevant. There's all that hard work is just out the window because you, there wasn't long enough to see what was happening. So one does not simply earn 50 shares on a Facebook post, no. You have to be patient and work for it. Um, this next part is a little tricky. So it's all about me. Not you, not about any of you, it's about me. So even though you and your agency are participating in social media, honestly, your con the constituents can care less about you. And we'll talk about this more in a second, but they don't care what you have to say, unless, there's always an unless, there's always a however, unless what you say relates to them, affects them. That's when they start caring. If it affects me, then I will listen to you. So you always have to keep your audience in mind. Having a good content strategy helps enunciate and mold your goals with your audience's goals. So it helps, it helps you translate your needs into their needs. So that's another quick overview of why, how important it is to have a content strategy. Uh, the next part, um, yeah. <laughs> I love Willy Wonka, these are my favorite. <laughs> um, so, public versus private. We heard many great examples from Blair about how, how we're a brand. And yes, we are a brand. We are trying to get our voices out there. We're trying to get people to talk with us. This is a great quote that I've actually shared with a lot of people in this room already, but um, from Christopher Legane. He is the US, he's part of the US Coastal Guard, um, their public affairs office. And he just enunciates this perfectly. He says, we need to learn to measure success differently than a private sector. Our audience isn't made up of customers, but of fellow Americans. And we're not trying to sell them anything. They bought us, whether they like it or not. We're trying to give them a stake in the process. So we're different than our private sector because we're not trying to sell anything. They have us. What our goal for social media is that we're making the government process transparent. We're letting them see into us. We're humanizing <coughs> entity. The government's scary. The government is big and terrifying. But being in social media, we're humanizing it. So th and that's a little different than Oreos and Kit Kat because we are the government. Um, so now let's get into what do we need to put into our strategy. And as I mentioned earlier, the first part is you need to know your goals. This is the foundation. This is the bottom of the pyramid. Without goals, everything crumbles. You have to have your goals. Um, there would be no purpose uh, to using social media without any goals. But how do you develop goals? Where do you start? First, you have to start with something broad and encompassing. And for us, as Georgia State employees, this is kind of easy because someone has already thought of our goals and has thought that broad and encompassing um, goal for us. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Here's an example. Right, here's a Public service. <laughs> yes. I'm thinking of more, something more specific. So this guy right here is our big boss. <laughs> and he has set out goals for us. He has this governor's vision. Has anybody seen this before? Mm -hmm. I hope you have because <laughs> this is what governs all of us. So that his vision is to make a lean and responsive state government that allows communities, individuals, and businesses to prosper. Focusing on educated, mobile, growing, healthy, safe, responsible, and efficient government. That is, like everyone in this room for the most part, that is our main goal, to relate to that. So then you have to get a little more specific. So each agency is then a little more specific outside of that, or off of that goal. So the governor's mission, then that agency, then within that agency, your division is a little more specific. And then your team is a little more specific, and then you, and your strategy and your social media is the most specific at all, of all. So your social media has to relate to your team's goals, which relates to your agency's goals, which then relates to the governor's goal, 
Are we all on the same page? Does that make sense? A little complicated <coughs> period. But that's the basis of social media. Or that's what you should keep in mind with your social media. So for example, some social media goals might be to communicate and to engage with your constituents, to have a conversation. You're making a responsive state government. So it all relates. Um, for Georgia Gov, we like to uh, be a, we're a customer service. That's our second goal. We, so we're having a conversation, but we're also answering questions. We're a customer service. We work very closely with 1-800-Georgia because I'm not extremely knowledgeable. I don't know everything about the state government, but they do. So we work with them. That's Joe Gray over there. <laughs> um, another goal that we have is to support other agencies. That's you guys. So, which is um, allowing communities and individuals and businesses to prosper. So it all relates to the goals. So for Georgia Gov, we don't have our own content. We do have our own content, but for the most part, I rely on you. That's why I badger you all the time for, hey, what are you doing today? Hey, can I have, share this on Facebook or whatever. So those are our goals. They all lead back up. Um, a bad example of this is with um, my counterpart in Alabama. First of all, let me say I'm from Alabama. <laughs> I love Alabama very much. I was born and raised there. They are my heart and soul. Love it. However, their social media is not spectacular. <laughs> and it's something that we can use to learn from them. So what not to do? Don't do this. This is, um, so what they do here is their media, their media group, every time they send out a press release, it's automatically posted on their Facebook page with the um, title and the link to that press release. This is all that their social media is. So <coughs> Alabama.gov, this is Alabama.gov Facebook page. One time they um, posted a press release about white nose syndrome and bats in caves. And I just written a blog about this. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect opportunity. I can interact with the Alabama government. I can talk to my people. <laughs> so I commented on it saying, Oh, I'm so sorry. I live. I'm so sorry. This has happened in Alabama. I live in Georgia. We were just affected with this too. Blah blah blah. Super nice and bubbly. Nothing. Got no response from them. No indication that they were even looking at it, talking to me, or whatever. I looked through their newsfeed to see if there was anything. No comments whatsoever. Not a single <coughs> fan of theirs had commented or liked or shared any of their statuses. It was, it's literally just this. This is their whole newsfeed. So unless their goals are to bore the world and to be redundant, I would say that this is not a proper use of social media. Um, so, but something good can always, there's always silver lining. We can use this to learn. We can learn not to do this. Um, so that's first. First and foremost, know your goals. Second, know your audience. And we've all touched on this all day today. But you need to know your audience. Who are you talking to? Put yourself in your constituents um, shoes. What do they want to hear? How would they want to be talked to? What do they, what are they looking for? Make your, make their needs your needs. So often after I post something on Facebook or Twitter as Georgia Gov, I will then go to my personal <coughs> account. And I will, so I will look at my news feed on, um, from Bethany McDaniel to see if that pops out. If my post from Georgia Gov, if I would read that, if it interests me. Disclaimer, some experts say don't do this because you are not your audience. However, in this specific case, I am Georgia Gov's audience, um, on Facebook at least. If you look at it, you can look at insights on Facebook to see who is looking at you. And actually for Georgia Gov, 50% of our audience who interacts with us are women between 25 and 54. So that makes up the majority of our audience. So even though in an ideal world, I would love to talk to every single person who lives in Georgia, who pays Georgia taxes. That's my ideal audience. However, they're not really, they're not all looking at us. The main people who are looking at us, at least on Facebook, are women between 25 and 54. So knowing that, I can find ways to interact with them better. So know your audience. Um, next is to know your voice. You have to have a consistent voice. Blair just went through a bajillion platforms that you can use. And those are awesome. But you have to have a consistent voice <coughs> across all platforms. Notice that I'm saying voice and not tone or style. Your style can change, your tone can change, but your voice needs to be consistent. Um, so this is whether or not it's across multiple platforms or multiple people posting on your social accounts. Um, so for Georgia Gov, 
our voice is to be informative, concise, and friendly. So in every post that we do, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or on our blogs, we try to be informative, concise, or friendly, and or friendly. We use different tactics for Facebook and Twitter and blogs, but we stay within those parameters. So know your voice across multiple platforms, but also know your voice when multiple people with multiple people. So you need to be cognizant of your voice when multiple people are posting from your account. For GeorgiaGov, this really isn't a problem because I'm the only one posting from our accounts. However, there are other agencies that have multiple people posting from your accounts. So you need to make sure that everybody is on the same page and using the same consistent voice. Another point um, that is often overlooked is with interns. A lot of state agencies let their interns run their social media, wow. and <laughs> interns are here six months, a year, whatever. So that's, real, that's a really um, high turnover rate, so your voice, it's easy for your voice to change because multiple people are um, talking about it. So this is a good opportunity to create a handbook, as I was um, saying, to have a handbook like, delineating what your voice is and how to do it. Um, another good exercise for your interns or whoever's posting, new posting on your social outlets to do, is to um, read maybe a few hundred of your past posts to kind of get a hand on what you're saying. Also, and or, make them write a few hundred of their own posts as practice so that they can get a hold of what <coughs> you're trying to say. So it's very important. Know your voice across multiple platforms. Also know your voice across multiple people. So, the Dunwoody Police, my favorite social media people in the world, um, they have a perfect mix of stay off the roads, or be safe on the roads. You can get on the roads. So be safe on the roads. Uh, don't be stupid. And we have a sense of humor. They humanize the police, which isn't an organization that a lot of people like interacting with. But they brilliantly have humanized them. They. Reading their statuses and their tweets make you, makes you respect them. You fear them, and you want to have a beer with them, all at once. I don't know how they're, they're spectacular. So across multiple platforms, here's an example on Facebook. On Facebook, they usually post narratives or anecdotes, and then they have a serious something in there, too. So you're learning from people's experiences. You're learning from people's mistakes. On Twitter, they're short current news. They, such as don't drive here, our ladies, watch your purses. Short current news, 140 characters. Um, the tweets are more serious and they're in their moment. And, but, but, so how is, this, how is this consistent with their Facebook, where they're silly on Facebook and whatnot? Well, they are silly on Twitter too. Don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. They're oh, hilarious. That's um, so they have the short current news, and then they also have pictures of an officer sitting with a bunny rabbit because it's Easter. <laughs> um, so that's that. Does that make sense, Joe? How they're they're the same across multiple yeah. platforms, right? And with multiple people, you can tell that there are they have different officers posting on Facebook, and you can see that by the initials at the bottom, T F J L. So your different officers are posting on Facebook, so you know it's different people. However. They all have the same voice. They all have that sarcastic, don't be stupid, I can arrest you, but I'm also kind of funny voice in their <laughs> posts. It's brilliant. If you're ever bored one day and you just want to look at Facebook, just go look at their Facebook page or their Twitter account. They're spectacular. Mm -hmm. Your next no is to know your boundaries. If you are not your communication department for your agency, make sure you're talking with your communication department. Make sure you get with them to decide how to react in certain situations, how to deal with negativity, how to, what to do when a snowstorm comes, because that apparently happens in Georgia. You need to keep in mind, but keep in mind your goals. Again, we always go back to our goals. Will responding hurt or help facilitate your goals? So for example, ranting and picking fights. People who are ranting don't want a conversation. They just want to yell at you. So is it good to answer back to them? Maybe, maybe not. It's all situational. Picking a fight. People who post on your Facebook page trying to pick a fight, they're looking at you, looking at you to respond, but they're not going to listen. <coughs> they just want to yell at you some more. So is it okay to 
reply back to someone who's just trying to pick a fight? Maybe not. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, one time, another thing is a lot of time, especially in Georgia government, people come to us to fix their problems, or at least for Georgia Gov. People come to us all the time asking us to fix their problems. And the best that we can do is to give them the resources, tell them what to do, tell them where to go, how to handle the situation. Sometimes that's just not good enough. They just want more and more and more. So for example, um, this was my second or third week handling the Georgia Gov Twitter and Facebook accounts by myself. And a guy tweeted at me saying, my, flood, my, my yard keeps flooding, can you fix it? I was like, well, first of all, I stared at the computer baffled for a second, like how can Twitter fix your yard? <laughs> but then I started thinking like, okay, maybe he needs some help. Um, maybe he can get flooding insurance. So I tweeted him and I said, have you looked at getting flooding insurance? That can probably help you if your yard keeps on flooding. No, 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 that won't do. I need more help. I need more help. Okay, maybe it's a grading issue. Have you looked at doing something with a grading in your yard? No, 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 that won't help. That won't help. Okay, maybe you can hire a landscape contractor. Maybe they can help make your yard better so it's not, it won't flood all the time. No, 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 they won't help me. They're mean. Okay, maybe you should contact consumer protection. If they're being mean to you, maybe consumer protection can help. No, 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 they don't like me either. They won't talk to me. Okay, maybe you can contact your county commissioner. Maybe they can help you, because this is actually a local issue, and there's not much I can do on the state level to help you. But it wouldn't do. He just, he didn't want, he didn't want help. He wanted me to just come down there and stop his yard from flooding. I can't do that. But I gave him options. I gave him an action that he could do. So this is a good example of what I learned when to stop responding. <laughs> After I'd given him three or four options, good options, I might say. <laughs> that was a good advice for him. Um, then I should have just stopped. If he wanted more, he can tweet at me more, but eventually he'll stop too. He'll find someone else to go talk to. So that's an example of when I should I should have known my boundaries. Now I do know my boundaries, and I won't keep interacting with someone who's not willing to work with me. Um, so I'm not saying to don't respond. I know that's a double negative. Stay with me. I'm not saying to not respond to um, negativity on Facebook or Twitter or any of your social platforms. Sometimes it's actually OK to respond to, so to negativity if it relates to your goals. So here's an example of a guy who posts on our Facebook pretty regularly. He and I have a great relationship. Um, he always has some idea of how to make the Georgia government better. He always has some plan that we can do better, some, some plan that we should implement to make the Georgia government better. And so this was actually just last week. Um, I shared a status from the governor's or the Georgia Office of Workforce Development about technical colleges in Georgia. And so he responded back explaining how we can make technical colleges better. We're not doing it the right way, so we should do it better. So I thought, should I reply to him or should I not reply to him? Would replying to him help my goals of communicating and conversing with a constituent? And I decided, yes, it would help. So I replied back. And I have a little formula that I use when I'm responding back to negativity or to people who have questions or whatever. So the first thing that I do is I acknowledge that I remember him. I acknowledge that he's a person and I know that he comments on us all the time and I'm glad that he's here. I'm glad that he's talking to us. The next thing I do is I give him information. Remember, we try to be an informative, concise, and friendly. So I'm friendly, I acknowledge him, and then I give him some information. I tell him, well, actually, the Zell Miller grant just passed the Georgia le legislative session and this is really going to help, hopefully, help uh, technical colleges in Georgia. Then I thank him. I say, thank you so much for reaching out to us. Don't be a stranger. Again, there's a familiar thing, the being friendly. I, I, and then I take it a step farther. So since I, this, what he had commented on was a status that I shared from the Governor's Office of Workforce Development, I contacted the, my friends over there and said, hey, this guy just commented on your status. It might be good if you responded back. So they then responded back. And it was, we're all one big happy family. Everyone. We are conversing with our constituents. So even though this is an example of negativity, we were able to take that negativity into, positive, into something positive. And so you can see that he liked, 
he liked it. He's, he's okay with us talking to him. He's not ranting and he's not trying to pick a fight. He's willing to work with us. Which actually brings me to my, to my next point about with the workforce development. Your next no is to know your comrades. You need to look at other accounts like yours. Form a support group. Um, that can either be other state agencies or other state agencies, if that makes sense. Um, you can, if you see something that another agency is doing on their social account and you like it, why not try it on yours? Why not experiment for a few weeks or a few months, see if it works? Keeping in mind, though, that your audience is different from someone else's audience. So if it works for them, it might not work for you, but why not try with a controlled experiment? So for example, we have the Georgia Social Media All-Stars group on Facebook. And this is a informal organization or group on Facebook that was formed a few years ago to bring all the social media people in the state of Georgia together. This is where we collaborate. We ask questions. We ask for advice. We share articles and we share information. It's just a place where we can all come together and be a team, because we're all Georgia. We're all a team. We grow and we learn together. Another example for me personally is I look at other, I look at my counterparts in other states. <coughs> so other states' Facebook and Twitter pages like mine, like I use. Again, however, there's always a however. I don't look at every single state, obviously, like Alabama. I don't really need to look at Alabama because they're not really doing anything full time. <laughs> but I don't need to look at them. <laughs> Another um, Facebook page that I don't really look at is Delaware. Does anybody want to guess how many fans Delaware has on Facebook? Three. Three? <laughs> anybody else? No guesses? Three? Delaware actually has over 24,000 fans on Facebook. For a point of reference for GeorgiaGov, we have 3,500 fans, a little more than 3,500. So Delaware is more of a dream than a reality. I look at them to see how they're succeeding so well, but I don't really see them as a comrade because they're like Michael Jordan, and I'm a little, I, not Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's good to know your comrades, but be aware of who is in your circle. So for example, I actually look at Maryland, Kansas, Texas, Missouri, um, because their Facebook and Twitter accounts are very similar to mine with GeorgiaGov. With Maryland, we interact all, not all the time, but we'll occasionally interact with each other on Facebook and Twitter. For example, a Georgia soldier died in Maryland this summer, and he was buried in Maryland. So Maryland, the Maryland.gov Twitter account, tweeted at us saying, we're so sorry about the loss of this soldier, we'll take good care of him. So we responded back, thank you so much, thank you for honoring our lost brother, Thank you, blah, blah, blah. Not blah, blah, blah. I did not say blah, blah, blah. But we, we had this communication. We had this interaction. Another example is um, Maryland Day was just a few weeks ago. So I said, happy Maryland Day to Maryland. And then we had this awesome conversation with each other where we were just interacting and we talked about Georgia Day. And it was great. So not only can I look at them to see what they're doing and see if I can learn from them, but I'm also, we're, we're a team. We're all, just as we're all Georgia, well, we're all America, and so we work together. Um, in Kansas, I've actually personally, not personally, but via email, talked to my counterpart in Kansas. We've collaborated on how to implement Flickr in, for, our, for Georgia, or for the government, state government. Another account is Missouri. They're spectacular. So after you're done looking at Dunwoody Police, <coughs> go look at Missouri at their Facebook and YouTube page because they implement videos wonderfully. Videos are, I don't know, they're, they create their own videos and then they market them spectacularly on Facebook and on YouTube. So um, it helps to know your friends. The next no is to know your numbers. This is your evidence. This is your hard evidence of what's working and what needs to change. But what do your numbers mean? What do I mean when I say numbers? Well, again, that depends on your goals. What are you trying to accomplish? So for GeorgiaGov, we are trying to engage and interact with our constituents. <coughs> so this is a chart that explains, from the past three months, it's um, all the posts that I've done on Facebook for the past three months, and I've broken it up into categories. So we have different types of posts every day on Facebook. Um, so for example, every 
Monday and Tuesday, we do a meet your representatives and meet your senators post. And then every Friday, we do a good morning from the Capitol post. And we do a throwback Thursday post, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here, I've taken those numbers, engagement, the comments, likes, and shares, and I put it on this graph so I can visually see what's working and what's not working. As Nikhil mentioned, though, take this with a grain of salt because just because a type of post isn't working, that might not be the type of post's fault. It might be I'm posting it at the wrong time of day or I'm posting it on the wrong day of the week, whatever. But this, with that aside, this is just kind of like a dumbed down version of how I can see if I'm succeeding or not. So looking at this chart, my videos, I am not Missouri, our videos are not doing too well, at least in the past three months. However, my pure tech statuses, the ta that mean, that's the second column right there, or second bar. Um, that means no links, no photos, no nothing. Just pure text are doing pretty well, especially in the light category. What I can really learn from this whole chart is that we need to have more snowstorms. <laughs> our, no. our Facebook and Twitter engagement just shot out of the roof during the snowstorm. People were coming to us for information. Which actually brings me to my next point. You need to know how to change. Your goals are your foundation, but this is probably the most important part about having a content strategy. You have to know how to change. So with the snowstorm, I, I usually have Facebook and Twitter scheduled out, typically a few weeks in advance. Sometimes it's a few days in advance. But regardless, I have certain <coughs> posts, like my Meet My Senators post. Every Tuesday for the next month, I have it scheduled out that on every Tuesday at 10 o'clock on Facebook, a Meet Your Senator post is going to go out. Um, but during the snowstorm, nobody cares about meeting their senator during a snowstorm. <laughs> they, no, they don't care. So I changed all of my scheduled posts and I moved them down or deleted them so that I could post real time, so that I could share information from um, GEMA, so that I could say what shelters are open. I can say who, what schools are still stuck. Whatever, I didn't say stuck. Better PR language than that. Um, so I, I took away my schedule and I made it real time. I changed, I changed my schedule. It wasn't repeatable. I was changing to the situation. Another example is um, a smaller example, marijuana, legal, legalizing marijuana. That typically is in our boundaries to not talk about because it's such a partisan issue and there's so many different views on it. However, during this legislative, se legislative session, if anybody was following it, cannabis oil was a big deal. Everyone wanted to know about cannabis oil in Georgia. So people were asking me questions about it. So I had to change my strategy. I had to change my boundaries. Normally I wouldn't talk about that, but people were trying to find the information, so it's my job to show them where to go, where to find it. So I would show people the bill. I would explain where it is in the process. What did it got attached to this time, et cetera. So I had to change my strategy. Another example, last example, is Kathy. Oh, Kathy. I, I like JF, JF Williams from before, but Kathy is probably my most favorite um, poster on our Facebook account. Kathy started posting on our Facebook account in about 2011. Something happened and Kathy got turned off on the Georgia government. She just, something in 2011 made her mad. And so she was very vocal about saying she was mad at the Georgia government. So here are some of her um, posts on our statuses about how she's not happy with what we're doing. So, and it, it's not like she did this every day. It would be once a month or every other month. Kathy would, we would post something and she would find that offensive and so she would reply back to us. And all of these are on um, our Facebook page. So if you want to read more about Kathy, feel free to look at our Facebook page. So during the snowstorm, this was a perfect, Kathy was just in heaven. Look, this is perfect proof. Like, I, she just went crazy saying about the things that we could do better during the snowstorm. So here are some of her, um, some of the things that she commented during the second snowstorm in February. Um, and actually in the, in the first status, I replied back as Bethany, not as Georgia Gov, but I replied back as Bethany. Are there any Doctor Who fans in here? <laughs> yes, thank you, Emma. <laughs> so there's one Doctor Who episode where the people of the Earth get stuck 
in traffic for like 15 years. You know what I'm talking about? Yep, gridlock. Yes, that's it. Yep. <laughs> so I responded back as Bethany saying, well, at least we're not in Doctor Who. At least we haven't been stuck here for 15 years or something like that. She didn't find that funny. <laughs> 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 but, um, so Kathy, every time that Kathy posted on our Facebook page, I would respond back to her with information. Again, our goals, concise, informative, and friendly. So if she was having a problem with some judges in her county, I would say, here's where you can go to, to tell, who, here's who you can tell about these judges that you're not happy with. If you're not happy with, or I mean, any example, Kathy's complained about it. So I'd always give her an action. I'd always inform her of what she can do, how she can fix this. Well, during the snowstorm, I was a little flustered. There was a lot going on. And so I changed. I changed my tactics with Kathy. So she's commenting. Um, I posted about how to drive safely in, um, in snow. And so she replied this sarcastic, stay home and ride four wheelers. I mean, that's not horrible. That's not bad. So I, again, I do my informative. That's great. But just make sure that you and your kids are staying safe because I shouldn't be taken lightly. And so then she, so that's my informative response. She replies back, yeah, you're right, but we don't have ice, Dumbo. We just added, <laughs> we just have about four inches. I'm implying that she, that's just, because I know Kathy and I, I don't know Kathy, but I can see her saying that. <coughs> um, so instead of giving her more information, like I did with a Twitter guy to fix his yard, I decided to take the friendly route with a little information slid in there as well. So I say, good, we're so glad to hear, we're so glad to hear that. Is it beautiful? The capital in Atlanta is still just wet and cold, no so snow yet. And then, so that's friendly. Then I slide in that information. Please also keep in mind that snow can turn into ice. So keep your guard up just in case. Then I'm back to friendly. Feel free to message us pictures with the snow in Cleveland if you have any. And all she responds back is, I'll send y'all a couple through this, or through tonight. Basically, she's saying, I'll send you a couple tonight. And you want to know what happened? That's it. Kathy has not complained on her Facebook post, on her Facebook since this day, since February 11th. Not a single negative comment has been posted on her Facebook from Kathy. Just because I was friendly to her. Well, I don't know if it's because I was friendly to her, but I humanized the government. I wasn't just informing her, I was humanizing her, or us. And so then she, she still comments, but it's not negative. So before, during um, the first snowstorm, when we announced that offices were being closed, she was like, of course they're closed because the governor, like the daddy post, the governor is your daddy, he shouldn't be telling you what to do, whatever, et cetera. But now, when we're announcing that the offices are closed, she's agreeing with us. You're right, it's not safe. Um, many were closed today too. Nothing negative. Just a little bit of friendliness. No negativity. So changing my content strategy, changing how I replied to Kathy made a difference. So really, if you don't take anything away from today, really, um, there are no rules. <laughs> um, you don't need to just get into a routine. And don't just go. You have to be willing to change, especially with the algorithms, uh, with Facebook's algorithms changing all the time, as Blair talked about. Things are constantly changing. Ten years ago, I was on MySpace. I didn't care about Facebook. That was something my brothers used. But now, like, I don't care about MySpace. <laughs> I use Facebook now. So things are constantly changing. So you have to know, you have to evolve with them. And this is really hard for us as humans because we are creatures of routine. We like having routine. I've had the same thing for breakfast for 10 years now. I like my routines. But with social media, you can't get into a routine. You have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to evolve. And so we'll learn more about this from our panelists. Be sure to tweet your questions to them, to everyone, um, and get your questions ready because we will go over about how they've changed and how we, we've all gone through our challenges together. And thank you. Thank <laughs> you.